Our lives are defined by the way we see the world. So let's reimagine, reimagine, and reimagine again. Climate change is the most pressing global issue facing our world today. And it will inevitably affect younger generations the most. The world young people are inheriting is under threat. And in order to create a sustainable future, we must undertake urgent and strategic action. One of the reactions to our climate emergency has been a push to enroll students in STEM programs. Not only is STEM a way to prepare oneself for multiple well-paying career opportunities, but it's a, mean to train, it's a means to train future scientists and leaders who can shape policies that will lead to a more sustainable future. The major issue with this plan is that scientific evidence has not been enough to convince everyone of the urgency of this crisis. This can be broken down into two major problems. First is the information problem. The abundance of information related to the science of climate change has strangely led many to turn to non-scientific explanations to understand why our Earth's atmosphere is getting warmer. And then, there's a selfishness problem. <clears throat> Several studies show that even those with high levels of scientific training and reasoning capacity were more concerned with personal, belief, personal interest when it came to forming their beliefs about climate change. In other words, even those trained to think scientifically often form their beliefs according to personal needs instead of facts or evidence. One of the strange realities of the human condition is that it often takes more than logic and evidence to transform our thinking, our behavior, our actions. How can we form the kind of intellectual and moral traits needed to overcome the information and selfishness problems? How can we confront the climate emergency with patience, empathy, and resolve? This is where the humanities come in. Now, the humanities are not in fashion. Every time I look up, there's a new article explaining why history, religion, philosophy, and literature are dwindling into the dustbin of the past. At a time when our phones demand constant attention, when social media dominates our lives, when reading seems impossible and irrelevant, I think books have a chance to help us save the world. Now, critics will say that even if reading Jane Austen's novels or digging into Plato's dialogues is interesting, it's not going to help you get a job, and it's not going to help you help us face the climate crisis. One response is that the humanities are, in fact, pretty good at getting people jobs. Statistically, philosophy and English majors score among the highest on the LSAT. And increasingly, tech firms want to hire candidates with highly cultivated critical thinking skills. The humanities prepare people for big-time jobs in unexpected ways. But there's another reason they're valuable in the 21st century. They form individuals and communities with the virtues of patience and empathy. The humanities make us comfortable with complexity. And they equip us to confront the inconvenient facts of our time. In that sense, they are vital for forming a generation that will work smartly and cooperatively to overcome this climate emergency. While many are willing to write off the humanities as an unnecessary educational indulgence, athletics programs are held up as spaces in which students learn teamwork, goal setting, and the power of determination and collective action. We pour tremendous resources into youth, high school and college athletics, because they are seen as beacons of character formation. What if we began to see the humanities in the same way? How do we practice long-term solution planning that goes beyond our short-term self-interest? How do we practice seeing the big picture that goes beyond YouTube views and Instagram clout? How do we practice envisioning what our communities, families, and selves be, could be, and find examples with those with the daring to create better realities. 
We practice by entering the lives, worlds, communities, and texts of those who've lived at different times and in different places. We use philosophy, history, religion, to understand how governments, policies, and culture affect the highest and the lowest, those at the centers and those at the margins, those with power and those without. We form our passions with muscle memory through dialogue, debate, discussion, and argument, and thus train ourselves to see from various places and through various lenses. These practices make us more formidable and more fit, and they increase our mental and moral endurance. Humanistic inquiry, or the practice of reading big, hard books together, is a rehearsal of what kind of people we want to be. It demands that we give account of our beliefs, our values, our behavior. When we read, we see the world through different eyes. Those of occupied peoples, abandoned children, oppressed women, and migrants caught between two worlds. We investigate the past in order to envision a different future, looking to those who lived through the threat of nuclear holocaust, those who rebuilt faith and hope after World War I, and those who made new homes after crossing the ocean from Cuba, Japan, or Vietnam. <clears throat> to study the humanities is to practice seeing the world from beyond our own desires and to train as individuals who can respond to hard news without turning to false science or demagogues to explain it away. By practicing humanistic inquiry, we form ourselves together in order to respond to the demands of our age. Athletics are more than physical fitness. They cultivate the virtues of hard work, cooperation. Yet we often think of humanistic inquiry as more like a crossword puzzle than basketball practice as if a good book is nothing more than an escape for nerds. But humanistic inquiry is a craft similar to athletic training. It's a means of character development, one that develops individuals with the passion and the tenacity to face and form a world beset by tragedy and sorrow, potential and hope. When we study the humanities, we become more open, more expansive, more patient. We mold ourselves into the kinds of people who can accurately interpret information and instinctively put themselves in other people's shoes when trying to determine the best course of action. In short, they are our best hope at overcoming the information and selfishness problems. After 20 years of studying the humanities, I can tell you, they've shown me that the riches of the human condition this absurd condition, go way beyond power, way beyond profit, way beyond efficiency. We have to stop thinking of reading literature or studying philosophy as just intellectual puzzles or interesting activities. They are cognitive and moral training. Books are the tools of civic warriors, the weapons of a generation that will save the world. Thank you.